Hello, my name is Jim Moulton, and today I'm going to go through a bit of a core training exercise session. Oftentimes people ask me when they start getting into their uh, later 30s, mid 40s, somewhere around that range, how they should be exercising and what types of activities are best for their body. Well, usually at this point in time, you shouldn't be doing a lot of uh, jarring or jolting movements that are shocking the joints. That would be hard running on concrete, tennis, basketball, those type of activities really do put a lot of strain on the joints. So, you know, if you're in great shape and you've been doing it all along, then definitely continue to do so. But if you're just starting to exercise, or if you're getting to the point where your, your knees and your back and the main joints are starting to bother you, you might want to consider doing some low impact exercises that can also build some, some core strength at the same time. So to get started, let's start with a deep breath. Inhale through your nose. Try and exhale through your nose. Let's do this about three more times. Deep, relaxed breaths. Inhale. As you exhale, try to squish your stomach muscles. And pull your diaphragm towards your backbone. Inhale. Exhale. One more, a little bit deeper, a little bit longer. And exhale. So the key thing to do with uh, deep breathing exercise is to move your diaphragm, make the stomach muscles move. That helps draw the breath deeper into the lungs, helps get more oxygen into your body, and also starts that chemical reaction for the, uh, the dose chemicals, the dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, and endorphins to be released into the bloodstream. So throughout this whole set, we try to stay fairly relaxed and breathe deep as we're doing each of the different individual exercises. So let's begin with our feet about shoulder width apart. Imagine you got into the pool, and you got out, and you forgot your towel. So you start to shake your hands, like you're shaking the water off of your hands. Just as loose as possible, let the, the blood flow and start to tingle towards your fingertips. If that's fine, try to get the elbows and the forearms to move a bit more. So I'm using somewhat of a uh, shaking motion, using some kinetic energy as I start to link the different uh, limbs together. So from here, I'm letting the shoulders move shoulders lightly shake. Again, like you're shaking water off your body. That's all fine. Let the shoulders and the chest drop. Let your hips and knees drop with each breath. Again, deep, relaxed breaths. All inhaling and exhaling through your nose if you can. If that's fine, try to lift your heels just slightly off the ground. So like I said a moment ago, we get the kinetic, kinetic linking of all the major joints. So it's coming all the way from your toes to your ankles, to your knees, your hips, spine, shoulders, elbows, wrists, fingers. So ideally we're trying to do at least 30 seconds. A minute or two would be better, but just to keep within some type of time limit here, we'll shift from one exercise to the next after say about 30 seconds or a minute. So the next exercise we're going to do is put the feet slightly wider. Let your hips sink, so center gravity is low. Scoop one arm in front of your body and then alternate. Same time I'm scooping one arm in front of my body, I'm also scooping with the other arm behind my body. If that's fine, try and turn your focus and attention towards each side as you continue to breathe deeply. So you don't need to necessarily breathe on each repetition. It would actually be preferable if you breathe every second or third repetition. So I'm scooping in front, scooping behind, gently turning the shoulders and the spine, focusing my eyes to both sides. So again, we're going to do this for at least 30 seconds. Deep breaths, all inhaling through your nose and exhaling through your nose. That way you're taking more deep, regulated and filtered breaths. Also, when the mouth is closed, you're breathing that way, you start to activate the saliva glands, which keeps the mouth moist. All right, so the next exercise, we're gonna go again a bit wider, with wide horse stance. I'm going to keep one hand at my hip, my right hand, pivot. So my feet are facing 45 degrees. So if this was a horse stance, equal weight on top of a horse with both knees bent equally, 
This is going to be called a bow stance, where one knee is bent and one leg is relatively straight. You can let it bend slightly if you need to. We always try to keep the knee above the ankle, but at times it might go as far as the toes, but we'd never try to go past the toes. So either above the ankle or slightly forward is fine. Slightly behind is fine also. The, co the goal here, the key thing to keep in mind is we're trying to keep the knee in the same line as the hip and the foot. We don't want to be offline one way or the other. Comes to this position from the side, you can see where my knee can go forward towards the toes. Anything beyond that's going to start to put extra undue strain on the knee joint. So again, back to about here. So I got one hand on the hip, my left hand scoops, and I reach across as I extend away from my body. From here I come to the side, back to the horse stance, open up the chest. From here, I'm going to serve the teacup. And just bring it to the side of my body and then back. Pivot to the left, bow stance, knee bent, knee straight. Scoop with the right hand. So I'm trying to have a gentle tug or pull with my fingers pulling towards the side and I feel a connection all the way from my right hand to my right foot. And then again, I open up, do the serving teacup, and back to where we started. So each time I do this, I add on to a bit more detail. Bow stance. Twist the torso as you scoop. Open up the chest. Next exercise would be to match your hands and circle in front of your body. And then try to circle above your body. Serve the teacup on the side. Scoop and alternate to the opposite side. So again, I have this gentle twisting, like a rope or wire being twisted. That would be my, my arms, my spine, my hips, with the gentle twist. And then I take the tension away. Come across to me. Circle in front. Circle above, arching your back. Serve the teacup, scoop, repeat, and alternate to the opposite side. So again, we've spent at least 30 seconds, probably a minute or two, so it's time to go on to the next exercise. So I still have this bow stance, a bit wide. We start off the same way with the twisting, reaching, and extending, and then I bring both hands in like so, like I'm holding on to a big bowl. And then I follow my torso down, I split at the legs, and I sink down from the hips. Then I lift up, look up, reach down, look down. Then, from that position, I shift across. Here's the bow stance again on the other side, and reach with your palms together. Try to make your body straight like an arrow. And then we draw in, and I turn opposite. Try to bring my right knee or my right shoulder, rather, and elbow to my left knee as I look behind. So that's the whole set on that side. So I reach and extend. Hands come up. Follow down. Come up. Look up. Look down. Reach down. So at the same time I shift, that's where the hands come across and reach. Typically here, I take a deep inhale. Reach and exhale. Draw back. Left shoulder and elbow to the right knee. Inhale. And exhale as you look behind. So again, let's reach. Extend. So if I have the bow stance going primarily towards the right side on a 45 degree angle, when I come into here, now my feet are pivoting a bit more forward. And then I reach down. And then I reach up. Reach down. Shift across, try to make the body long and straight like an arrow. Draw back, palms press, twist the spine and shoulders as you look behind. Next exercise. So if again, this is a horse stance, bow stance, I'm going to sink down a little bit lower. Try and get your left elbow, the arm to be straight up. From here, I try to get that left elbow to come to my right knee. Each time I do this, I am aware that my lower body is set. The alignments are straight, so again, to keep the knee, the hip, and the foot all in the same direction. If this is all fine with this arm 
up, my other hand comes to the elbow. I make a hook. So as I go to touch my elbow to my knee, this other arm hooks above and behind my head. I'll always come back up to this spot. Inhale, exhale as you squish. Inhale, exhale. If that's all fine, try to look at your back fingertips. So I look forward and I look at the back fingertips. It's very good for your balance as it challenges you to keep changing your focal point. Inhale in front, exhale as you twist. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Two more, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. With all these exercises, we need to do them on both sides. So as to keep equilibrium between left and right, and top and bottom, inside and outside, front and back. So here's the horse stance. Pivot to the bow stance on the left side. Elbow up, elbow to the knee. And you're usually gonna notice one side has more flexibility or strength than the other. And that again is the reason why we try and do both sides. So hand underneath by the elbow, make a hook, and twist as you squish your elbow to your opposite left knee. Exhale, inhale, exhale. If that's all fine, we again try to track that back hand and then look forward. Exhale as you bend and squish, inhale as you straighten up. In, out, in, out, in, out. Next exercise, back to the horse stance, back to the bow stance. So I'm going to try to align my body so my foot lines up straight to my head. And then my hands are going to stay in front of my body. So if I'm in the prayer position. And then again, folding and bending just the upper body. Lower body stays set. Don't let your knees and hips wiggle all over the place. Keep them set. It kind of keeps this part right here, your hips locked into place to keep the stability. So again, let's try a few more. Exhale, in through the nose, out through the mouth. Out, in, out, in, out. Same thing on the opposite side. Horse stance, bow stance. Lean away from the foot so as to make that straight line from your foot to your arms. Bend and squish. So I'm trying to fold my torso. Inhale, exhale, in, out, in. Out, in through the nose, out through the nose, in, out, two more, in, out, in, out. And there we stand up, we take a deep breath, slow inhale, and exhale. Another breath, slower, slower exhale. Third breath, slower, and slow exhale. So let's continue. Any well-rounded exercise program should have some type of kicking and or stretching type of movements. This doesn't mean you gotta be doing side kicks and round kicks and sweeps. I'm talking more about extension of the hip joint in order to be able to stretch the hamstring muscles, the quadricep muscles, the inside muscles of the leg, the groin muscles. So let's begin with a side bow stance, if you would. And I'm just going to keep the stability on my front left leg. as I swing from the hip, my right leg. Trying to keep the knee fairly straight, the toes pulled back. So I'm just swinging the hip joint and breathing out. Now ideally, if we're gonna engage the whole core, we need to move our upper body also. So what I'm gonna do is bring the arms up, and like I'm pulling down at the same time, I swing the leg up as I bring the arms down. Exhaling each time as I bring the leg up. Now you don't need to go real high. Ideally, you go how high you can go comfortably, and then maybe just an inch or two beyond that to start to feel that light stretch. If this is all fine, we switch to where I bring my hands up, and then to my earlobes, and then they hook and hook to the sides as I bring the leg up. So it's a bit of a coordination exercise for your upper body. At the same time, swinging the lower body. So palms up to your earlobes with the fingers facing down and then hook over and at the same time hooking down you're bringing the leg up so it ends up looking kind of like this from the front direction palms up palms down hook and then the arms hook to the sides 
So again, we do this on both sides. First one being that bow stance, just swinging the leg up, arms come down. So just that interaction of your arms with the leg is very good for your coordination and it helps your balance also. But really what we're trying to do is we keep doing the hand gestures with the lower body is to engage the longest connective tissue train throughout the body, the posterior uh, superficial fascia train that runs from our eyebrow over the top of our head, down the spine, down the legs, all the way down towards the, uh, the ball of the foot. So every time we do this, if I'm just thinking about swinging my leg, that's great. But really, the more we can engage the upper body, we can start to stretch that whole chain as one whole unit. So back to this side, right? We got just a few with the arms coming down, the leg coming up, and then we switch to palms up, palms down, hook, swing the leg up. Try to exhale every time you swing the leg up. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. So with that one, I'm primarily trying to bring my right knee towards my right shoulder, which is wonderful, great. As we continue to do this, we want to increase our range of motion. So we can start to adjust the angle instead of going straight up, I bring the leg across my body. So again, it would be the same thing, swinging the leg forward, and arms down, swinging the leg across my body to the opposite shoulder, and then eventually as far as we can go towards the left side of the body. And then we can go other directions also going the other way. So I think you get the idea that we're trying to increase the range of motion of the hip joint. So often people live their whole life with only moving their hip in this forward direction. Very seldom do they start to move it to the sides unless they need to because of some accident or injury or maybe a sport. Um, but for the most part, people do not try to exercise going sideways, which is quite a bit of the range of motion that we're allowed to have with our hip joint. Another direction we often don't go is, is backwards. So we can also do that same kind of exercise where we swing the leg forward and then swing back or like a pendulum. We go forward, we go backward. And again, it's all gradual progression to go however high you can go with your comfort level. So next exercise set we'll work on will be to use um, some resistance to build up some strength in the shoulder joint. Again, oftentimes people exercise what they see, the, the big muscles, the biceps, sometimes the triceps, the chest muscles, the legs. Well, we have over 600 and some muscles in our body. Wouldn't it make sense to exercise more of the body's muscles overall to be healthier and strong and flexible throughout the whole body instead of just those main muscles that everybody sees all the time? So let's try. We're going to begin with feet close together, zeroed out position, sink down from the hips, make your feet about double the width of your shoulders. A horse stance, like we're sitting on top of a horse. Sink from the hips so as to feel your stability lower with your center of gravity, which is right below your navel. So the first exercise will be to squeeze, like you're putting your hands into the ground, squeezing some sand, and bringing your hands up in front of your torso, a bit away from your body. And then rotate the wrists and the forearms, and then the shoulders, all the way to the sides. Look with your chin towards your shoulder, and then the opposite direction and then we come back to where we started from. So that's like the first two exercises. We lift up in front, we inhale. We sink down, we exhale. We open up, we inhale. We close, we exhale. Next exercise, rotate your wrist and your forearms out and bring your fists above your head to form a circle. But now I'm leaning, well, my back is actually straight, but I'm extending my arms away from my body. So to give you the side view, what we just did, we squeeze up. This is the first one. Inhale, sink down and exhale. Rotate, wrists, forearms, shoulders. Span all the way back. Look to one side, look to the other side as you exhale. Bring the arms back in front. Rotate, wrists, forearms, and then the shoulders come up. Inhale, sink down again, exhale. So it's kind of like this constant lowering as we exhale, 
rising slightly as we inhale. So now I'm going to grab my hands as if I'm holding on to two ski poles and bring them down slowly to the sides of my body and then behind. Sink down in that horse stance and lean forward. Try to look forward, chin up. Slowly extend back up. Raise the arms up as to be shoulder level. And then we sink down again. So quick review once again, horse stance. Squeeze up in front. Tense with the fists, loose with the forearms and shoulders. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Take a deep breath here. Sink from the hips. Arms come all the way behind. Chin up. Lower the arms, raise the legs slightly. Raise the arms straight up in front of the body. Sink down. Slowly sink. Slowly back up. Cross your arms. And like we're doing a, uh, a fly, if you would, with dumb dumbbells, we extend back, but we're going to do this from a leaning over position. So I cross the arms, bring the chin up, do the fly, arch your lower back, and bring the arms down slowly. Straighten the spine again. Palms go straight up, and again, look to the right. Turn the palms level with the ground. Look to the left. Sink down. Arms come around in front to make a circle again. This time the circle is parallel with the ground. Slowly sink down. Slowly come back up. Arms above the head. Again, knuckles facing towards each other. Make that circle above your head, kind of in front. And then from here, arms come to the side slowly as you straighten up slowly. Sink your hip, the right side, feet come together. Take a deep breath again, and exhale right away. Another quick breath, a little slower. Another breath, a little slower yet. And down as you exhale. So that set is done with no weights, but we can do it again with dumbbells to put more, resist more resistance on the muscles, the bones, the nervous system, and all the different systems of the body. So what we don't want to do is just focus on using heavy weights just to kind of feel like we're doing something special that we can lift heavy weights. Really, light weights moved correctly in the right alignments will engage the muscles and the joints at the same time, which will make the body stronger as a unit. Again, we're not just trying to make the muscles bigger, the biceps, the chest, the legs. We're trying to make you know, all parts of the body stronger with focus on the joints, the muscles, and the tendons where everything comes together. So we'll try the next exercise set with weights, and we'll go from there. So let's continue and go through the set again, this time with some um, dumbbells. It doesn't really matter how heavy they are. You can go super light. You can go with bottles of water where you have next to nothing in them and graduate up to a few, you know, a few ounces or a few pounds to give you some weight and resistance. Again, the main goal is not just to have big weights to get big. The goal is to move your body in the correct alignments so as to make the joints, and joints align with the muscles so that there's more of a cohesive connection that makes, makes the joints and muscles stronger together. So begin, feet together, zero position, sink down, so you have weight on the right leg, draw a half circle into a horse stance with the left foot. So as I sink my hips down, I slowly raise my arms up into somewhat of a curl, bicep curl, and sink down. Come up slightly, rotate the wrists and forearms and shoulders out, look to the right, look to the left, and then bring them back in as you sink down. Next exercise, slowly come up, twist to rotate the forearms, the wrists, the shoulders out, slowly sink down. Turn the hands so the thumbs are on top, like you're skiing down a hill, slowly raise the arms up and behind the body as your chin comes forward. Slowly straighten up, arms rise in front, slowly sink down. Slowly straighten up, let the arms cross, tilt over from the hips, arch your back, chin up, make the fly exercise, and then back down. Slowly straighten the hips up, raise the arms to shoulder height, palms facing forward, thumb up, rotate the wrists, so now the palms are facing down as I sink down. Slowly come up, slightly, arms circle in front to make 
that circle shape away from my body, and then above, reaching out and away, and then slowly extend the arms to the sides as you slowly straighten your legs. So doing it that slow and controlled method is going to put more tension on the body going you know, in, in both directions, bringing the weight up, bringing the weight down. Um, with fitness training and you know, weightlifting, it's uh, sometimes referred to as reverse reps. What we're doing right now is probably beyond reverse reps and that I'm not trying to just focus on reps, I'm trying to make the movement slow and fluid as possible so as to keep tension and resistance through the full range of motion. So to do it again from the side position, again, feet together, zeroed out. Yeah, horse stance, arms curl up as you sink down. Come up slightly, rotate out. Wrists, forearm, shoulders, look right, look left. Sink down again as you bring the arms in front. Rotate and turn out. Inhale, sink down, exhale. Slightly up, up you're skiing down a hill, move your arms back, inhale, exhale. Slowly raise your arms as high as you can, and then slowly let them down, and then back up in front. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. So that's the whole set. Um, practice without weights and then again with light weights. Use some discretion. You don't, again, want to be doing anything too heavy that's going to put too much strain or impact on the joints, the goal, lightweight, slow, controlled movements. That's it for today's exercise set. Take care, be well.